All right, so this is the last of the recordings that I'm going to do for this app. And what I want to do is I want to wire up all the pieces. So we've got our menu on the left. We've done the CSS. We've done our layouts. We've made it so when you click, um, we've got the map moving in response, placing the markers. And what I want to do now is I want to go back to the traffic camera data and I want to make use of the locations north, east, south, and west, and also the main image URL that we programmed on the prototype of our of each of the camera objects. Okay, so inside of this area here, this images div, what I've done is I've added some content. So I have a couple of changes that I've made. The first change is I've put in an image element. So my goal is to have an image element that lives in the upper left hand side of this images div. And it's going to be our main camera image. So for example, like if this was our camera, this would be the image that we would see. So I want that to be here. To the right of that, what I want to do is I want to end up with a grid. I want to have a like a table essentially of smaller image elements, north, east, south, and west, that you can see for that for this camera. So I've got spaces to put them, but I've got no content in here. So eventually what I want to end up with is an image, an image, etc. All of these different images, and they're going to be for each of the cameras that are uh, associated with different directions. And I'm going to use JavaScript to build that content. The other thing I want to program is I want to start out with this images uh, element to be hidden. I don't want to see it because there's nothing in it. Until you click on something, we don't have any data. So there's no point showing it. I'd like the map to be I'd like the map to be full. So I've added a class of hidden, and the first thing I want to do here is I want to go into my CSS and I want to I want to deal with that hidden class. So I'm going to write a hidden class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to display none, and I'm going to mark this as important. So in other words, I don't want any other styles to override this. I want this to be the way out for the display property. I want this to be the way that it works. So let's just try this and see what happens. What should happen? Yeah, it does. We've got nothing at the top here. Okay, so there's no uh, image element until I click on this, I don't need it. So now what I want to do is I want to show that when I click on it. So in essence, I want to be able to remove this hidden class using JavaScript. When the user clicks, I want to get rid of hidden on the images uh, div here. So we already have a click handler. And inside the click handler, we're dealing with all the clicks for our various menu items. We have code from last time to update the map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another function call to update our images. And what I'm going to pass this is I'm going to pass it a reference to the camera because the camera has all of the URLs that we're going to need to use. So I'm going to pass it camera like so. So I'll write a function update images. takes in a camera object. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the images div from the DOM. And I'm going to use JavaScript to say, take that images div, access the list of classes. So the object is class list. And I want to, there's a bunch of things I can do. The one that I want is to remove. I want to remove the hidden class. So remove hidden class if present on, on the images div. If it's already gone, nothing's going to happen. So it won't hurt to do this again. So let's try this. Page loads, nothing is visible. As soon as I click on something, it's visible, which is great. I click on something else, it's still visible. So that's exactly what I want. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to set the source equals whatever the URL of this currently selected camera is, and I'm going to do that through JavaScript as well. So I need to grab the camera image ID from the DOM. So I'm going to say So my URL is available on camera.url. So I need to say let camera image equals document.query selector. And I want to do camera image. So I'm going to grab that image element from the DOM. And I'm going to specify that I want the camera image. I want to set its SRC to be equal to, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this method here, this get image URL method, which is going to return the URL that I need to display. So I'm going to say camera, and camera, remember, is being passed from the click event handler. We, we found the camera from our array. We're passing it into update images, and I'm using it here, get image URL, like so. Okay, so let's see if that works. Click on a perfect. Perfect. As I click through, it's selecting different intersections and pulling in the camera image and displaying it live, replacing the one that was there and showing the new one. Exactly what I want. That's great. Uh, okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to fill in this part right here, the directions. So I need to create image elements for each one of these things and I need to put them inside of um, this div. So I need to grab this. Let's start by grabbing this div. So here I'm going to say create image elements for all direction cameras. So I go and I'm going to use the directions ID to grab this. Now what I need to do is I need to get the directions data. So I'm going to say let directions data is equal to camera dot and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to call my get direction images function. So what that's going to give me, if you'll remember, is an array. And the array is going to have objects. And each object is going to have a URL. And it's also going to have a direction, a letter. So the this data is going to look like this. I'm going to have an array. And inside the array is a URL. So this is a, a URL. And also a direction, which is something like north. And then I have more of those. So what I need to do is I need to loop through those and add items to this directions div. So let's do that. So I'm going to say directions data dot for each and I'm going to pass in a piece of data from this list. Okay. And inside here, what do I need to do? I need to create, create an image. So we're going to say let image equals document uh, create element image. I need to specify that the images source is equal to the data's URL. So as I receive this, U this data, I want to grab the URL property and I want to set it equal to the source. So it'll load that and put this image into our direct our uh, directions div 
So we're going to say directions div dot append child image. Let's try that. Nothing shows. I click on the first one. Perfect. Shows the image. And then it's also placed all of my other directional images in here. Now, they're not laid out properly yet. We're going to fix that in a second. But for the moment, let's try clicking another one. OK, there's a bug. So you can see what's happening here is it's working, but it's not clearing out the old data. So let's make a fix to clear existing image data from the div. So we're going to say directions div dot inner HTML is equal to nothing. So if I rerun this, shows it to me, clears it, reloads it, reloads it. This is good. This is what we want. OK. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to get this to be displayed so you notice how I've got an image here, and then I've got one, two images below it, which are basically the same width. So what I'd love to do is I'd love to put all of these other four smaller images beside this image. Uh, I'd like them so that they're in a, in a grid. I want to stack them. So one, two, three, four, two rows and two columns, and I want to evenly space those things out. OK. I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way to do layout in CSS. And we've been using Flexbox to do everything. But I'm going to experiment with something else. So this time what I want to try is I want to try using uh, grid. So let me show you what that's going to look like. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that I want my, I want this directions, this directions div, I want it to be, I want it to display its contents as a grid. So I'm going to say exactly that. Directions display as a grid. So when you make a grid, what you can do is you can specify your columns and your rows and how big you want each of them to be, like what the layout of each of these things would be. And they call this a template. So I'm going to specify a grid template for my rows. And I'll do the same thing. I'll do a grid template for my columns. So what you're going to do here is you're going to specify how big should each row be and how big should each column be. And what I want to do is I want to let the browser do something similar to what Flexbox is doing. I want it to decide for me. So I don't want to mess around with this many pixels, that many pixels. So I'm going to say, take the available space and I want you to use one fractional piece of the available space for the first row and I want you to use one fractional piece of the available space for the second one. So in other words, take what's available and split it into two equal units. I'm not specifying like pixels or anything like that. I'm just saying use what's there and fill this thing. And I'm going to do the same thing for same thing for my columns. So what I should end up with is literally a grid, four by four, like two by two, four boxes. Let's see how this looks. Not bad, but I still have to do some more styling to move this up over here. So I need to make some more changes. So let's let's fix this container. So this container here, my images container, I want to add a few more styles to it. So I want to tell it to, um, I want to display all of the contents of this. I want to display them using flex. And I want to justify the content so that it spaces everything evenly. Actually, I'll, let's try space around. Yeah. 
yeah, that's better. That's better. Now if I bring this over, what happens? Yeah, you can see how it's putting the space, the extra space around the edges of this, like so. That looks good. But I've got a nice grid, so I've got the main image, and then I've got one, two, three, four of these other images, which uh, show me the directions for everything that's going on here. Now, another thing I want to do is all of these images that I'm working with, they're all about you know this size, so 225 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that for my images, I want to make sure that the height doesn't go beyond, uh, let's say, 250 pixels. I want to cap it so that if this if this got really big, I don't have enough space to go to have this thing grow really, really big on this monitor. But um, I don't want it to grow beyond a certain size. I want to keep it. I want to be careful that it doesn't get too big because I don't have anything else to show if that happens. Okay. Um, good. So let's make let's make one more one more change here. Let's change the um, the way that these images are showing up. The one thing I don't like is I don't know which direction I'm looking in. So is this north or is this east? I don't know. So what I what I want to do is I want to make a change to the way that I'm building this content. So right now what I'm doing is I'm basically creating I'm creating an image, putting the source in like so, and I put that into my box. Well, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a div, and I'm going to put my image in the div like so, but I'm also going to put in a span. And in the span, I want to put the direction. And I'm going to use CSS to overlay that letter just at the bottom right hand corner of, of the div of my image. So let's make a, let's just make a slight adjustment to this. So I'm going to create a div. And I'm going to specify for this div, I'm going to give it a class name. So I'm going to say div.className is equal to, let's call this a direction camera. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is instead of putting this image directly into our container up here, I'm going to stick it First of all, I'm going to put it into this div that I just created right here. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to make this span and I'm going to put the span in there too. So I'm going to say span is equal to document.createElement span. And I'm going to take that span and I'm going to specify that its inner text is equal to my data that I'm looping through. I basically want to grab this direction. I want to grab the letter N or E or whatever it is. So I'm going to say data dot direction and I'm going to convert that to an uppercase letter like so. and I'm going to put this span into my div. So now I've built this like so, and I'm going to put this div instead of the image, I'm going to put this div inside my directions div. So I'm going to say add wrapper div to the, so I'm going to say directions div dot append child div like so. Okay, so let's save this. This isn't going to work yet, but it, you'll see what it does. Okay, so what I get now is I get a, I get a div. Let me show you the, let me show you in the console here. If I were to look at 
this, you can see that what I have in my directions div, I have one, two, three, four divs in a grid. Inside each of these divs, which has a class of directions camera, I have an image. And I also have a span with north, east, etc. So what I want to do is I want to move this so that it's not outside the bounds of the image, but I want it to be positioned over top of or relative to this other image element. And I'm going to do that using CSS. So what I have to do is I have to say that for all of my direction camera classes, I want to position the elements inside them relative to the element itself. So I want to not just use the regular flow of the document, but I want it to be positioned relative to this, this div that I'm working with. And then what I can do is I can say that for all of the spans, for all of the spans, I want to modify how they look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position them using absolute positioning. In other words, I can now specify the top, the left, the bottom, or the right. I can do any of these that I want to. You wouldn't do all of them usually, but I can say in my case, I'm interested in the bottom and the right. So I want to position this relative to the bottom right of this. So I want to have it be right at the bottom, right at the bottom of this, and um, sorry, right all the way to the right. And I'll have it maybe four pixels up from the top. Let's try this. I want to change the color of the text to white. And I want to set the background color. Uh, let's use the same color that we're using on the header. And let's, well, let's try that. That's pretty good. The only thing I don't love is that it's really tight. Um, it's really tight to the letter. So let's give it a little bit of padding. Let's say two pixels maybe. Yeah, that's a bit better. So now the letter is got a, just a little bit more room um, for you to see what's going on. So as we jump around here, the contrast is nice because I can see all of these. Uh, I can see no matter what the color of the background image is like, it shows me what's going on. So that's really good. Okay, so there's only one other thing I want to talk about and I've actually cheated. I got, <laughs> I got tired of the font. So let me just turn off what I did here and we'll go back to what we had before. So this is what our font looked like before. We're using a serif font. And I don't know, it, it didn't, it wasn't looking good to me. I wanted a font that looked more like an app and less like a document. So I wanted something that was a little bit harder lines. Um, so I, I went and grabbed a, um, a font stack here for sans serif font. And the one that I'm going to use uses whatever the best built in, essentially the built in fonts. So I don't have to down, download new fonts for the platform that you're on. So if you're on Android, you're going to get one font. If you're on a Mac system, you're going to get another font. And if you don't have any of these other default fonts installed, it's going to use a, a sans serif font by default. So when I do that, I set it up as high as I could on the body. And that ends up looking like this. And um, a lot nicer. I also bumped in the uh, padding on this title because it was just so tight here. So I, I wanted to specify padding left. I did it. I did it eight pixels. I thought that was uh, whoops. I'm on the wrong. See how I'm on the body and it's too much. This isn't where I want to be. I want to be on this header on the header here. Padding left 
eight pixels like so, just to bump that in so that it's, uh, that's not what I want either. Padding left eight pixels like so. And I'd say this thing is pretty much done. There's obviously more we could do. Um, it's still really basic, but it is using real time data. It's dynamic. It's using um, a pretty a fairly complex uh, layout system using lots of different aspects of CSS. And it's not that much code, which is really cool. It's amazing how much we can do already just with the things that we've learned. So I'd encourage you to try building this on your own, experimenting it with it, changing it around, see if you can improve it. I'm, I'm sure you can do a better job than me with the way that it looks. I'd be glad to see what you come up with.